So guys, as you can see from that little bit of time lapse, we are straight back on, well, Chris is, the rotisserie for the HJ Viva. Guys, quite a lot of you do mention about this parts Viva. I, I didn't realise you was repairing that one. And guys, we're not repairing this particular car. It is too far gone. We are just using it as a template for Chris really to make this rotisserie on. We're using this car. He can use it to line everything up and... If he's got to drill any holes or anything like that in it, it's not going to be an issue because this one is just the parts car. So what we actually plan on doing is actually getting this rotisserie finished in this video. And what we'll do is we'll actually rotate this Viva and show you how bad it is underneath. I mean, we're going to be rotating it anyway, right? So let's show you. We're going to crack straight on and try and actually... Well, we've got a lot of welding to do, So, well, Chris has, so crack straight on and get this all welded up and get as much of it done, hopefully all of it, in this video. Let's do it. So on that little bit of time lapse there, guys, you would have seen Chris was actually making up this plate for the top here, the top mount, and he actually welded, you can see that thread bar inside it. He actually cut it out and welded it in there. And not only now is that adjustable, so you can adjust it, it's for the future so that this section can actually be removed from it for storage or if he wants to swap it over to make it fit another car. Also, just for a bit of extra strength, I know it's a... It's a little bit overkill, but this is how Chris wants it. He's made up these, these corner plates to actually stick in there for a bit of extra strength once it's tipped over. The locking mechanism, I'm, I'm quite impressed with, but that drill bit is purely just for mocking it up. But there's the locking mechanism that's actually going to be welded on. And this is going to be the locking bar. So if we... I'm probably not going to be able to do it actually one-handed, but basically something along those lines, Chris. Yeah. That's how it's going to be so that that locks it out. So really moving on with the front end of it now, and you're pretty much happy with that. We're not going to weld it up until we've... We're going to tack that all together. Tack that piece together, yeah. and then that's the front end finished, and just needs it's... welding. Yeah. And move round to the back and concentrate on doing that. Let's do it. So it's actually the next day, guys, you would have seen it was bright sunshine and this morning it's tipping it down. So we've had to have the door shut. Chris nailed it there on the back end. Same here at the top. On the actual latch, he's built a bracket for it and he's got that bolt in there that you can adjust in and out and also remove all this for storage so that it can be swapped over as well. Also, this bar he's put in here, 
it's actually a just it's got three different heights there's holes inside this bar here so he's made that all adjustable also we did do off camera he's welded those wheels up the, the plates on and the reason he's welded those completely you see the rest of it's just spotted he wanted to get those welded on rather than put a bit of heat through this rubber and these plastic wheels i know they're not going to get that hot but he said why he was there they, there was no reason to stop him welding them up he is in the background at the moment getting the welder ready to actually go round and seam everything up now and get it all completely wrapped up with the welding we have been round to the hydraulic shop and got the hydraulic pipe for it so once he's finished the welding we can then move on get the hydraulics done and uh maybe give it a test run chris eh yep. he's done the bar through there again that's got a joiner in it so he can separate that for storage make it a lot smaller because it is quite long and also use other bars for smaller cars or bigger bars for for bigger cars so we'll let chris get that welded up and uh we'll come back when it comes to the hydraulics guys i've just popped out actually and i went and got the um quite a lot of you would have watched the transit truck video i just actually took the other one to the car wash chris has been in here and we will we will walk around and show you in a minute but he's finished all of the welding and as you can see it's off the floor and he's just looked at me you can see the worry on his face he's <laughs> He's just about to actually put the weight of this car on on the the rotisserie. And he said, Rob, I'm really worried. Like, is it going to snap in half? So I said, well, I'm getting the camera out, mate. If it's going to snap in half, we're capturing it. So are you ready? He's actually going to put the weight of the car on the rotisserie. Bit, bit of creaking. It's got it. It's got it. You can see those chassis rails there with the big parts missing, and I think he's noticed that. What are you thinking? It's got it, mate, isn't it? Let's do it. Sorry, guys, Chris was just saying then. People probably thought you meant the rotisserie snapping, but that wasn't what I meant. I meant once he put the weight of the car on the rotisserie, that the car could possibly snap in half, but... Well, I'm sure some of you got that anyway. We're going to now get it down and connect all them hydraulics up. Just walked over to the bench. Chris got it laid out before we do actually connect it up. He's got a flow reducer on here because we're going to use the pedal off of the dozer. Or possibly, Chris has got a pump in a box as well that he uses for his little tipping trailer. There's the T-piece there. And this is what we whipped down and have made up. So, four metre hose. And that's going to go, obviously, from one end to, that. to the T and then this one to the pump I so see. it's quite straightforward let's Very chuck cute. it on and give it a go Just before we do get started, Chris said, before we turn the car, we'll make sure that everything's working all right. We've got no leaks or anything like that. See, we've got the car up in the air. You're actually going to try and rotate the rotisserie on its own. Right, mate, go. There she goes. That's quite a nice speed, Chris. Absolutely perfect. You happy with that? Yeah, I think that'd be fine, don't you? Right, let's put it down there and try and turn the car on it, eh? Yeah. Let's do it. Moment of truth. Chris has put all the brakes on, on four of the wheels. So the two outside ones that end, two outside ones this end. We're quite happy that it all works okay. We're ready to put it down and actually finally test it with the car on it for the first time. Let's go, mate. <laughs> Well, okay, yeah, that's fair enough, yeah. Just in case it did for some reason. 
Chris was just saying there, just for safety, the arms on the ramp, he's actually gonna lower them down just for safety, like the other side, if it was to tip over, it would catch it. Yep. Safety pin out. The compressor on. I just heard it fire up actually, the light's dim, so. Yeah, it's got a bit of air in that, hasn't it? There she goes. Goes on its own a little bit. Yeah, it's got slightly out of balance. We're gonna have to alter the pin position now. Right, okay. Just so it's on that axis and it's, it's more evenly balanced. It's working though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Should we go all the right? way? Yeah, I think so. You're gonna have to go down a little bit with a ramp. Yeah, you're gonna have to come around here. And just hold it. Yeah. A little bit scary, I ain't gonna lie for me there, guys, because that was a lot of creaking and a lot of rust has fell out of that. <laughs> <laughs> and the boot has flown open. Look how bad that is, Chris. Yeah, let's have a up? little, yeah, let's have a little walk through. Oh dear, yeah. yeah, that's where the gearbox support was bolted, that's wasn't it? it? Yeah, the gearbox cross member, and that's where it's rotted out. The worst, isn't it? Oh dear. Yeah, I don't think we'd have been fixing this one, guys. Yeah. Oh, she's a little crispy. bit little bit crispy. Let's try and zoom out. Can we zoom out or we zoomed? We zoomed all the way out there. Let's try and get you a picture of the whole thing. Look at those seals, guys. Is it? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a plate there, yeah. It's the most solid part of it. And the chassis at the front, when you was taking the engine out, you said, these are right, these are gone, aren't the they? Was, yeah, it was. On the front cross member there. Oh yeah, you can see it there now. Yeah. Where the front cradle was. I think it said a plate there at some time. Yeah. Yeah, it has, yeah. And you got bits up here as well. Yes. Let's have a walk down the back and have a look. To be fair, that that yeah. side of it stood the floor. stood the test of time a bit better than yeah, anything else. That Is that the spare wheel hole? I'll take yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, tanks this sort of spare wheels. Oh dear, I'm just making a mess there, and I tap in. Yeah. Well, guys, the rotisserie works. Oh, look at that all <laughs> falling out. <laughs> and that's what happened. That's what that loud noise was. The boot lid coming undone. Let... Oh yeah, we should have emptied it out really What's first. The out? Yeah. There you go, guys. One sec, Chris. I'm just trying to get it at every angle. I know a lot of you want to absorb it, and absolutely brilliant. It's, uh, it's going to be a nice fight for the other one to work on. Yeah, I've got some chassis repairs to do on the other one. Oh, have you? Yeah, nothing like. No. But, yeah, it's going to be nice. Chris was just saying there, guys, the final little test. Now it is on its side. The idea of putting it on those wheels so that it is easy to move. Are you ready? Yeah, we'll go along to range you. Yeah. Piece of cake, mate. Oh, that's nice. Piece of cake. That is nice. Well... I think Chris is very, very pleased with that, guys. And like he said, he can take that pin out so that it can rotate the other way. So once he is working on it... He's got his little stall. He's at a lovely height. So he can sit here and work on this. It'd be quite nice, yeah. wouldn't it? 
and then spin it round and work round the other side on that. So, job is a good one. And all of that built out of scrap that was laying around the yard. You, you can go another one here if you want. What, and have it upside down? Yeah, I'll put the pin there, you can now unbolt that. Let the ram back off and bolt it back in there, and you can go again then. Do you think anyone would ever want one upside down? No. I wouldn't. No. I think that's perfect. That's why I've done it that way. Yeah. Lovely, mate. Brilliant. I know quite a lot of you appreciate it, but I really do like it when Chris makes stuff because I get to see the whole thing and just seeing him sitting there. He'll have a cup of coffee and he'll be quiet. And I go, you all right, mate? He goes, yeah, I'm just thinking about something. And I, every time he's thinking about something, I, you know, I know it's going to become a reality and he never seems to amaze me. You know, it's always, always rather seems to amaze me just making stuff like this. And like he said, he doesn't want to be lying down on the floor or putting the ramp up and welding upside down. You get covered in burns and he's made that. I just said to him, what did it cost you, mate? He said, well, it was £40 for the, um, for the hose, but he'll use that on his tipping trailer because... He's got like a pump in a box. It's down here on the floor, I won't get it, but he's got a box with a pump in it. And that little trailer he made up for, um, for down the field, he uses that pump. He said, I can just move that further away now and put it in there like over to the side with that hose. So straight away he's thinking, I can repurpose that hose for something else as well. The wheels were about 50 quid, he said, and again, if they're not being used on that, I can use them for something else. I just said, well, give us a total. He said, well, with the little bit of scrap that you had to go and get for me, the bar, the wheels, and the pipe, 110 pound from start to finish. Yeah, there was a little bit of welding wire and a little bit of electric to do it, but I think he's genuinely really enjoyed doing it. And as soon as he see it like that, he had a smile on his face because he knew that it's done now and he can actually get the other car on there and get to it. He did say it's got a little bit too much weight when it's going over, but then did realise, he said, I've got to appreciate, this car has got the doors on it and it has got all of the glass in it. So windscreen, back window, all the side windows. The other one is completely gutted shell. So he said it should balance out right. And if it doesn't, he's got these pins here so he can pull it in and out and get it exactly where he does need it. Just before we do go on today's video, oh, I actually want to put a couple of little apologies in there. Guys, the transit truck video that I put out on, that would have been Wednesday. I actually forgot to put the ending in there. It was a really, really long day and um, I don't know why I missed it. So apologies for that, but I did actually upload a separate little video that, uh, that you guys have, uh, quite a lot of you managed to watch that did have the numbers in it. The other, one of the trucks we got was a Sprinter and I sold that last night to another trader, which was lovely. And uh, so we've got, we've only got two left. The Transit that we did that day, that's gone. Yesterday, Wednesday, yeah, that's now sold and that's being collected Friday, so it's all good. And the other little thing I wanted to apologize about was the motorhome video. All the way through it, I kept saying, I'll elaborate in a minute, I'll elaborate in a minute, and genuinely, I missed that bit out as well, but it was recorded. And basically, for those of you guys that I didn't respond to and don't know what happened there, I actually turned up, there was another guy there, and um, he was, all, the lady, he'd rung the lady in the morning and said, oh, I wanna see the motor home, and she said, I've already got somebody on their way to come and view it. Um, I've got your number, I'll give you a call if he doesn't have it, and you can come and have a look. And he said, okay, can I get your postcode just so I can see how far away you are? And he did no more than actually punch the postcode in and turned up at the lady's house five minutes before me. And when I arrived, he was asking her how much. She said the price and he said, I'll have it. And she went, well, no, I can't do that. He's here to look at it. And the guy got quite shirty and quite rude and told me to go home. And I said, no, definitely not. We stood our ground and we got the camper. So. Sorry guys, I'm really, really waffling on here. Hope you did enjoy today's video. If you do, please do give Chris a massive thumbs up. He really does appreciate it and it shows your appreciation. In this particular video, Chris is gonna be in the comment section answering your comments on the HA Viva. Don't forget, please like, subscribe and share. 
check out the merchandise. The link is in the description. And follow us on Instagram, where we've got little sneak peeks out throughout the day at Selvage Rebuilds. We'll see you very soon in the next one.